Hi guys, um, I just felt we need to talk about uh, you know the last post I made. Um, I saw a lot of positive comments on it, so I just felt you know maybe it's um, it's right to discuss it in depth. You know, so uh, like you saw in the post, um, I went to one of the biggest African food stores uh, in Houston. And what I saw was pallets and pallets of yams. And when I looked at those pallets, uh, they were all made in Ghana. Um, we already all know this, you know. And the key thing is, um, probably 40 to 50% of the African food stores in the US, uh, there are over 3 million uh, Nigerians from rough estimates uh, in the US. Uh, that's about 1% of the U.S. population. So, you know, percentage-wise is not enough. But uh, if you look at the volume, um, if these 3 million people, who I would say probably 50% of them, uh, always eat African food, um, that is enough to do a serious business between Nigeria uh, and the U.S. But the question comes into mind, why is it that most of the purchases you see uh, are coming from places like Ghana, not Nigeria, you know. And then I walked through the African store and I started to see a lot of other items, you know, being made in, in Ghana. Yes, you have some from Nigeria, uh, Ola Ola, the uh, flower makers and Pandu Yam and all those things, they are doing good. Uh, there's also another one that makes a lot of palm oil, but the market is still open. There is still a lot that can be done. So the question is, why is it that uh, a lot of these things are coming from Ghana and I, I have you know I saw a lot of comments from uh, so many of you and uh, a lot of them are true you know but I felt we need to go deeper into what is the cause of this issue and number one again is um, our government has a big role to play when it comes to these things you know the average Nigerian businessman is poorly educated on uh, what it takes to go into export you know and that is the truth you know um, if you look at uh, let, let me give you an example two years ago uh, I was part of uh, a team um, that went uh, to an exhibition is they call it a, a food world food and beverage show it holds every year in Miami uh, Florida um, and this holds around November, thereabout. And um, before we could get Nigeria to participate, uh, it wasn't an easy struggle. Um, I had to personally make payment for, for the exhibition, about $10,000. We booked uh, three booths for Nigeria. And yes, uh, I was refunded the money by Nigerian Export Promotion Council, but I had to first of all make the payment and so many things. And uh, three, you know, some Nigerian representatives came, and I, I I'll tell you I was very disappointed at the quality of what we saw. You know, so uh, again, when it comes to education, uh, and I'm talking about poor education in terms of export, in that same show, South Africa was there. And South Africa took about 10 boots. And when you go to the quality of the boot that South Africa took, you see them as people who are ready for business. You know, they had all sorts of things, you know. And the funny thing is that the things on display in the South African boots, a lot of those things are made by reputable Nigerian companies. But as usual, I don't know how the selection process was done. Uh, you know, one of the companies that represented Nigeria, I think they were drafted from a Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and the product they brought in was a Popo Gari, you know, in not even in well packaging, in good packaging, but in nylon. You know, all this nylon they use for pure water. No, not even pure water. Pure water is even good. The nylon they use to, you know, when you go to buy fish or you go to buy crayfish, that transparent nylon they will put the crayfish in. That is what the woman had the, the, the gari in, dry popo gari, and she, she put it there as an exhibit. And when I looked at it, I was, I was really disappointed. You know, what came to mind was who in all seriousness is going to buy your products? And this comes again to education. Is our government educating our businesses on what needs to be done to be ready for export? 
it's a key question you know there has to be serious education in terms of quality in terms of how things ought to be done you know you you see our government the only time they start they take a uh, export serious is when um, either crude oil prices falls or when uh, our uh, FX rises to 450 then you see all government agencies they are talking about no export is a continuous thing the government needs to continuously put in energy into export into educating people you know and again if you see the few nigerian companies that are doing well with respect to export they are not doing it uh, through government partnership they are doing it on their own there are people who have you know taught themselves what to do they go to google they do a lot of research you know so again um i plead i don't know if there are any people in government that are listening to me we need to do something we need to look i'm available to come for conferences you know nepc has invited me many times to speak in various events and i do it for free because i see that it will it will benefit uh, uh, the nation you know but one thing i've noticed and that's why you know when people ask me uh, the training that i'm going to start soon why am i putting a hundred thousand i discovered that a lot of people who come in for those conferences for free are just jokers they are not serious you know they don't value it i know the, the stuff that i've given to people so education is one thing uh, until we are educated on the benefits, the ease, the potential of export, uh, we will not see a lot. Now, another one that is a, a reason why you see so many uh, uh, companies from outside doing so well in terms of export is our poor infrastructure. You know, you'll be wondering what has poor infrastructure got to do with it. Let me give you an example, and this is an example from a real company that got a contract to uh, the first phase of the contract was to supply, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was agricultural products. Uh, she got a contract to supply about 10 containers of these products. You know, so, you know, she sourced her first container. Uh, got a shipping company to do it now we all know how their papa road is do you know it took more than she was supposed to deliver those things uh, two and a half months from uh, a, a given date now this product took about three weeks to get to the port because of the bad roads you know three weeks to enter the port so if you are given two and a half weeks which is about 10 weeks and out of that 10 weeks, 30% of the time, three weeks, the container has not even gotten into the port. Then what are we talking about? So what ended up happening? Uh, what happened in the long run? She lost that contract. Why? Because the people who are giving you the contract, you are not the only person they are looking at. You know, they have uh, uh, opportunities to source this thing from Ghana. They have from Kenya, you know. And, and that, that, that was what messed up the whole thing. You know, so we, there, there is a lot that is really hindering us. There's a lot. So some of you have gotten uh, messages from some of you who have looked at uh, the, the, the first training I did, finding buyers, and are already having a serious discussion with some buyers. Some are already asking for cost of 40 foot, 20 foot containers. You know, you need to look at all these things. Factor these things when you are signing agreements with these companies don't go and sign an agreement because you are hasty that you'll be able to supply in two months when it's going to take you two to three weeks to get the container even out of nigeria you'll be shooting yourself in the leg so go for at least three months now it may look like it's long but it's not because if you have a steady deal with these companies and you tell them i will supply every three months what is going to happen is that it's going to be on a continuous basis so if you ship for this month they get it in three months if you ship next month they get it in the fourth month so before you know it you'll be supplying to them on a monthly basis so we need to factor in the type of things that are going on uh, in our local environment, the infrastructure, when you are trying to sign these deals. Take it very carefully, uh, seriously. You know, you look at companies like Egypt. You know, when you go to Walmart here, Egypt, you see clothes uh, in Walmart from Egypt. Now, if Walmart gives you an agreement to supply a shirt, they are probably going to tell you to supply a hundred thousand pieces. Because they have what over, I don't know if, if uh, over a hundred thousand stores or so all, all over in the U.S. 
and when they are sub telling you to supply that, it's not just one size. You're going to supply maybe three, four, five, six sizes. And these are opportunities that Nigerians are missing because of poor infrastructure. So I hope that the repairs they say they are doing on Apapa Road will will, uh, will uh, earn us a lot. Now, again, um, let, let's take another, another, uh, another issue that is affecting us, marketing. You know, when you say marketing, nobody is going to buy your product if they don't know it exists. You know, we have to market ourselves. You know, when people go online and search for, uh, um, um, uh, I don't know, hibiscus uh, flower, for example, are they going to see your product? But you see a country that is ready for, for, for export, they should be the one marketing their country. Let me give you an example. You see, I've not been in this export business uh, yesterday. I didn't, I didn't start this series on Instagram just because, uh, oh, I felt, oh, there's opportunity. No, we've been in this for, for long. About three years ago, when I saw the way things were going, the potential of export, uh, we've been in this for over a decade. I wrote a letter to NEPC uh, and I really give credit to the original coordinator in Lagos, Mr. Falake. That man has uh, a great dedication and ambition to see export move. Uh, but the issue is when you are one in an ocean of a bureaucratic environment, it becomes difficult to, to really uh, uh, shine. But whichever way, I wrote a letter to, to, to him uh, proposing for us to do an event in Houston where we are going to bring about a hundred Nigerian companies, Nigerian companies that have quality products to showcase in the US. And he loved it. He pushed it over to their, uh, their overall head of NEPC and they agreed for us to do it. We went ahead, we started looking for facility, you know, started put, we put everything in place to do uh, a big event. But, uh, you know, as Nigerian things will happen, the next thing I heard was that somebody high there in the NEPC hierarchy in Abuja did not like the project. Now, why you will not like a project that at the end of the day is going to yield millions of dollars? You're only going to spend maybe $200,000 and at the end of the day it's going to yield millions of dollars in FX for the country uh, still baffles me. You know, there is a lot. We, we Nigerian, the, the, the government is not marketing, you know, Nigeria as an export, uh, a source of, uh, of export. We are not. You know, you see uh, a lot of us watch CNN. You see countries advertising themselves on CNN. You know, they are hosting various business events. The only time Nigeria thinks of hosting an event that showcases our potential, like I said, is when the crude oil falls or FX rises and things are shaky. You know, you see all the ministries rushing. But once the oil prices rises, everybody goes back to normal. They are getting their oil allocation. You know, and the funny thing is that the oil allocation we are depending on is just a fraction of the potential that we can deal with in agriculture. Look at the vast expanse of land in the north. We need to start looking at all these things. You know, um, that is another one, poor marketing. Uh, Nigeria government, you need to get to the point where uh, you are really promoting Nigeria on a foreign scene. You know, we should see adverts. Look, if you are looking for raw materials, contact this agency. And then when you talk about all those things, you see that even the agencies that you are supposed to contact, there is no phone number. There is no, you send emails to some of the agencies, nobody responds to the, uh, the emails. You know, it's so sad. You know, we have a long way to go and I don't know how, how these things are going to be done. Uh, you, you, you talk to a senator, I was, I was with a senator friend one time and he gave me his card and you know the official email address on a Nigerian senator's uh, uh, business card was at yahoo.com. You know you, you begin to look at how, what, how serious are we with doing things. If a senator's email address on his official senate business card is yahoo.com, what does that tell you? Imagine the compromisation of uh, the, the uh, government secret if it's been, been shared on yahoo.com. Anyway, it's, it's one of those things. Now, another thing that uh, I know is a big issue is serious corruption at all levels. You know, so like I said before, on the issue of infrastructure, you need to be careful because it will take you a lot of time to process your product. So. <coughs> 
let's go back to the 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 african food store that uh, i saw those uh, pallets and pallets of yams so i spoke to the owner he's a very good friend of mine and i asked him why are you getting yams from ghana why are you not getting it from nigeria this is a yoruba man very lovely guy and he told me well <laughs> that if i if i know what he has experienced trying to do those things from nigeria that he had set up a warehouse everything in nigeria you know the first set of containers of yams they tried to do um, he said that was even when the ports were good you know uh, the road to the ports were good so they got to the port within a short time when he got to the port customs now said bring this bring that why have you not done this go and get us the certification from this go and bring this go and bring that at the end of the day what happened those yams were at the nigerian port for close to three weeks before they were finally able to do all the things that customs said, you know, they said, go and get letter from Son, go and get letter from Navdak. At the end of the day, by the time the yams got to the U.S., more than 80% of it had rotten. And you know the sad thing, when you bring something like a container of yam to the U.S. and they see that any of it is rotten, they won't allow that container coming they will burn the whole container. They have special facilities where they burn such things. And you know the funny thing, you will be the one to pay for it. So if you as a Nigerian business person trying to be patriotic to Nigeria, experience such, what will you do? He said he had to go elsewhere. He now made contacts for Ghana uh, and within two, three days of the items getting to the port in Ghana, they were given clearance to go. So you can imagine how much uh, uh, revenue just that one container is providing to Ghana. One, you have to hire a company, a transport company to carry the container. That is revenue. The drivers are paid. Customs people, they, they have to pay some small, small charges to the ports of Ghana. That is what Nigeria is losing. And what is causing that corruption? You know, the, the, the people in charge re responsible to give clearance will always find one reason. Uh, and that is, again, you know, these things, they live with us, you know, and we have to settle them. Like, for example, you know, if you are bringing a container out of the Nigerian ports now, the number, I know how much we, we set aside on unaccounted uh, amount per container. You know, you have to give to this, you give to that, give to this, give to that. So many names there. If you don't, they will just hold your container. You know, yeah, look, countries that are serious with export. Let's look at Huawei, Huawei of China, the, the phone company. When Huawei was trying to, to expand, you know, China is also corrupt, you know, but obviously not as much as us. They had some issues getting clearance and they reached out to their government that, look, we cannot be where we want to be if we continue to have these issues at the port. You know what the, the Chinese highest level authority said? They gave the port administrator a mandate that any product of Huawei that is going outside the country must be exported, giving clearance within 24 hours. Now, we are not saying that Nigerian customs should not uh, go do their duty. They have to do their duty, but speed it up, make the process easy. So any who are we products that gets to the port within 24 hours they are gone, you know. And I was speaking with a friend too uh, who works at Ericsson, and you know you know nowadays that <laughs> who are we has most of the telecos in their pocket. So while they are bidding for a job with uh, any of the telecos, uh, you know, while Ericsson is saying, well, it's going to take us three to four weeks to produce this, within 48 hours, who are we people have already told their, their branch in China in 72 hours there about the sample of the product is there. So are you going to be dealing with somebody who has a physical sample and somebody who is telling you, okay, it's going to take us three to four weeks? And that is the state Nigeria is in. So if you imagine the three million Nigerians in the U.S. who are being fed from Ghana because of a lot of all these things, it's a, it's a big problem. You know, customs has a big role to play let these things go out quickly because if you frustrate the average nigerian businessman what happens he will look for the cheaper alternative what is that cheaper alternative he will just import clothes from china and sell make his profit and move on you know so that's another factor um and then again our another issue that i see is look we nigerians we have that tendency to 
uh, want to circumvent uh, the processes and it's not right so let me give you an example again like i told you when we had uh, i engaged nepc for us to do an event in houston uh, we held a meeting in their head office in Abuja and they invi invited representatives from Customs, from Sun, from NAVDAC. They even invited a representative from the U.S. Embassy. And there was one question one of the people in the audience asked that got me baffled. This was a consultant to uh, the NEPC. And he asked the American uh, representative, representative from the U.S. Embassy, uh, why can't they lower their standard to allow Nigerian products to go in? You know, I was, I was so baffled. I'm like, what is going on here? How will you tell an American representative that, oh, uh, we should start allowing junk just because we want to do business, Nigeria wants to do business with the U.S.? It doesn't work that way. The funny thing was that the American representative did not even say a word. He was just looking at him. He did like he didn't hear the question. And that is what you see all along. You know, there was a big textile company that we were doing export for at one time. Uh, we were exporting their products to New York. And when you sit down with their manager and you tell them, look, for you to get waiver on uh, export duty on this, you need to state the quality of the material, the content. You know, a lot of you, if you watch my second series on YouTube, when I started talking about Agoa and Co, you know, you discover that when you are shipping uh, textile materials, you have to uh, break down the composition because the duty waiver, they look at a lot of things. They, you can't just bring in clothes and say Adire. They don't know what is Adire. But if you tell them it is 25% polyester, 75% uh, cotton, it enables, you know, the, the, the custom system here is automated. They now know how to classify it. When you tell this, I was telling this textile company, you know, you guys need to do it this way. This way. They kept on arguing with me forever and ever. Why should they, can't they just put I said, that is the policy and that is the mindset again. We Nigerians, we, we have this tendency to want to circumvent things. We have this tendency to just believe we can do things anyhow. And it's not right. You know, when they tell you this is the process, this is the process. Even the teachings that I'm doing here, I keep getting a lot of emails. I've told a lot of you, if you want to be successful in export, you need to focus on one product. I will have somebody send me a message that, oh, yeah, they've watched all my trainings and they are thinking of doing uh, uh, palm oil, they are thinking of doing flour, they are thinking of doing pot potato, they are thinking of doing fish. And, and then the funny question they will ask me after that is that, can they start all this with 50,000 naira? I, I, you know, now I, before I used to answer such messages, but now I don't because how you want to, you know, focus on one thing. Start with flour. Make sure you are an expert in that before you now start thinking of other things. You know, I also gave an example before uh, how we like to break the rules, you know, and it's affecting us because what happens is when the U.S. Customs now see anything from Nigeria, you know, alarms are ringing. They now start checking anyhow. A lady that brought in 300 kilograms of pomo. Yeah, you know, they may be able to get away with it at the Nigerian uh, border, you know, when they're exporting it. And they think, oh, they have, they have won. She came to the office and said, oh, can I help her clear 300? And I, and I 300 kilograms of pomo. That is a lot of pomo. A lot. Many cows were killed. And the only option they gave her is that it's either she pays for them to fly it back to Nigeria or they dispose it. So you can imagine. The rule is don't ship these things. You look at it, you started shipping it. Look now, Nigerians, we can't even export fish to the US anymore because they placed a ban. I can't remember, you know, I was reading through the article, what happened? Somebody shipped in dried fish in large quantities and by the time it got to US, the thing had rotten. There was, yeah, I'm sure there were delays at the airport or whatever, you know, maggots everywhere. When they opened the package and saw it, they just, you know, said no more fish. Who is losing? Because somebody wants to cut corners. So when people come to me and they say, oh, they want to export, and I tell them, 
this is not done. They'll say, oh, no, no, but there, we have other companies that do it. You are hiding those things inside clothes and co. By the time they catch you, it's not only causing problems for you alone, it's causing problems for a lot of other people. So when we tell you this is the right way to do it, let's do it that way. Please, it's very important. These are the things that are stopping us. Why they will now give Ghana preferential treatment. So for example, if you imagine all the dried fish that was coming to US and they now block Nigeria, what happens? You probably see one, two, three, four million dollars of revenue move to another country and then we continue losing. Why? Just because one person did not want to obey the rules. I keep telling you guys, for you to do export, to sell these things on Amazon, you have to have a packaging, you have to have this. Somebody will send me an email with a, a flower of uh, pot uh, potato leaves and say, uh, no, no, uh, sour soap leaves. One even sent me a flower with the leaves on the tree and say she wants to export this. And I'm like, okay, you want to, I should come and cut down the tree for you to export. Follow the process. Follow the process. If you follow the process, look, a, a, I'm not a motivational speaker. A lot of motivational speakers will tell you that, oh, you can feed good to a lion uh, even while the lion is awake. They tell you all sorts of rubbish. I'm not. I will tell you the truth. And the truth is, there is money in export. But you have to work hard. You have to start small and build it. What is the good? The good thing about export is that you can start export, you start from Amazon. Before you know it, if you follow some of the processes I'm going to teach you during my five week, uh, five day course, you will in one to two years not only be selling on Amazon, you'll be selling in various countries. And that is my focus. That is my target. So we need to take some of these things that I'm telling you seriously. Do things the right way. Then another big issue that I see while Nigerians are not uh, getting the benefits of export is you don't have any coercive policy on export. Why do I, what do I mean by that? So for example, I need to export maybe three, four, five containers of a product. You know, the current process is that I have to engage an inspection company. You know, you make a booking. Uh, some of these inspection companies are not even in the places where they ought to be. They come and inspect, I think Cobalt or I can't remember their name now. They come and inspect. After they inspect, you have to get a letter from NAVDAC, you have to get a letter from SON, you have to, you know, so many things. You are running around everywhere, you know, each, each department you go to, you spend like two weeks there. Why can't the Nigerian policy be such that if I'm trying to do an export, I go to one office and in that office, let the ground floor be who? Nigerian Export Promotion Council. You register, they teach you all you need to do. You go to the second floor. The second floor is NAVDAC. If NAVDAC needs to do your, st uh, your, your, your stuff, I'm not saying that should be their head office. But let them have representatives so that everything you are doing is in one place. I don't need to see NAVDAC in Badagri and then I go to Ikorudu at the other end to see Sun. And then I now go back to Abuja. Some of these inspection companies, their offices in Abuja. I have to go back to Abuja to get a, a letter for them to come and inspect my goods that I don't go. It's very difficult. And then from there, you now start dealing with customs for another one to two weeks, you know, bring this. No. Can't we have a one-stop solution that talks about everything? Take, take the example, Nigerian Export Proceeds Form. You know, it's a form you feel when you're trying to export in bulk uh, that they used to uh, monitor the effects coming back. It's a good thing because it helps Nigeria keep track of our trade statistics. But the problem is virtually no bank knows about this. I, I challenge you, go to your nearest bank and tell them you want Nigerian Export Proceeds Form. Very few of them know about it. And we keep saying we are ready for export. You know, it's a lot of things. So when the, my essence of doing this video is because, because I saw a lot of the comments when I posted the yams from Ghana is there are so many things you need to consider. Be careful 
if you see a potential company that gives you an agreement you know because some of you are doing really good there's a young guy that keeps sending me messages he has about you know he followed the processes i gave and the you know the uh, on finding buyers the process i gave is even like 10 percent of what you will learn in the main course but he followed just those processes and he already has people who are interested in container loads but when you see these people, be careful in the contracts and the agreements you sign with them. That is the essence of doing this. Don't go and tell them you'll be able to supply in two months because you are overzealous. And then the container will take about three weeks before it leaves Nigerian shores. You know, so be very careful. Again, learn to do things the proper way. If they say this is the documentation that is needed, do your research. And that's why I'm doing all this training. Do your research well. The worst thing you want to happen is for your product to be in the U.S. and they are telling you, oh, you need this form, you didn't fill this, you now have to start filling it back and forth. It always that gives that impression that makes the customs people to want to dig further into what you are bringing. When we tell you meat is not allowed into the U.S., don't go and be researching meat and be sending me messages that, oh, uh, but your friend brought in meat the other day. You know, I, we, you know we have to do things the right way. You know, and then again, yes, we live in a, a, a world where you know you have to do certain things to get certain things to be done. We have no other option. We have to live with it until you know the government is serious about corruption. But that all, um, I, I just hope this this uh, small uh, series uh, is enough to tell you some of the things you need to look into. And again, during my, my training, I keep delaying this training because of the lockdown, but I've made up my mind to start an online uh, series uh, where you'll be able to pay for it and you can watch it on your own. Uh, it's going to take about one month or so to produce. Um, but you will have all those things, you know. And, you know, because I see so many people doing so many wrong things. There's a friend of mine uh, who we were in school together and he, he is into, he wants to do baby clothes. And when he sends me pictures of the things he wants to produce, yeah, they are good. But I can tell you, you may have a difficult time selling those things on Amazon. Why? Because, you know, when you look at Amazon, there are categories of products that sell. And those are some of the things we'll look into in the training. There's what you call bestsellers on Amazon. Why do you want to produce a, a cloth at the same cost that will not sell easily when you have what you call bestsellers? And I will teach you how to dig into the Amazon archives, how to discover who those bestsellers are, and how to know what to sell. So there is a lot, uh, and again, I will you know, we're just waiting on the lockdown. Uh, hopefully, any time from now, it will be lifted. Um, we'll be there to, I'll be there to show you all these things. But again, um, if you even listen to some of the things I've said uh, in the past two, three months, you will have enough uh, to start something. Um, I think that's all for now. Um, uh, I will try again, like I said, these videos I do now is just in response to questions. So if any, if you have any question, no matter how, how it is, uh, just send me a DM. If it's one that necessitates me to do a video explaining it well, I will. But please, I beg you, stop sending me uh, DMs that you want to go into 200 foods and you don't even know how to start. You know, Look for something small, start small, and then grow big. That's the way companies work. Thank you all. Stay blessed. Bye.